Is it worth spending extra on a nicer cruise cabin or can you get by with just an inside room? Today, I wanna to share what you need to know about selecting an inside versus a balcony room up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RollerBeamBlog.com. The choice of what kind of cabin to get is not always so simple. If you're on a tight budget, an inside cabin is certainly a good choice because they come in at a low price and include access to the same amenities you might find in a balcony cabin. But will a room without any natural light or views be worth it for you? Will it be satisfactory or are you gonna hate it? This is a debate a lot of people go into and today I wanted to go through what you should know, what you should consider. I'm not gonna tell you you should book an inside cabin or you should book a balcony, but I wanna give you the food for thought that you should think about when making that decision for you. Number one, let's start off with what are the differences between an inside and a balcony cabin. A balcony room will be larger, and that means more living space both inside the room and on the balcony itself. In addition, a balcony room will have natural light, whereas inside rooms have no windows or doors to an outside view. More importantly, there's no fresh air in an inside cabin. The only illumination you're gonna get in an inside room is from the lights. Most inside and balcony categories are designed for double occupancy, but you can find variations that can accommodate up to four passengers in either type. You'll find in either room, two twin beds that can convert into one king size bed, a vanity area with mirror and chair, and a private bathroom. There's usually a sofa or a love seat as well in the room. Rooms that can sleep more than two will likely have Pullman beds that drop down from the wall or ceiling. You can also expect to find a TV, closet, mini fridge, safe and hair dryer in both types of rooms. Now it should come as absolutely no surprise that interior state rooms are usually cheaper than balcony rooms. The added room size, the balcony itself, and the view from a balcony come at a higher cost. The thing is, how much more expensive can vary? The price gap between an interior room and a balcony will vary from ship to ship and selling to selling. Sometimes it's measured in the thousands of dollars, and other times it's just a few hundred even less. When considering the price difference, you really should look at the nightly price and what that gets you. Nearly everybody that books a Royal Cruise is on some kind of a budget. So even if you want to book a balcony room, it may not be financially viable. So it's important to at least consider the options because there are many scenarios in which the difference in the price is actually low. So don't assume necessarily, oh, I can't afford a balcony room, at least price it out. Oftentimes, inside rooms are the least expensive option, which means people can spend less money on their cruise vacation or have more money to spend during the cruise on things like drinks, shore excursions, specialty restaurants, or anything else for sale. The difference in price will depend on factors like itinerary, as an example, balconies on an Alaska cruise, are more expensive than Caribbean itineraries, time of year, peak versus low season, and ship class. Newer ships have more balconies, so there's more supply there. And then of course, balcony rooms are significantly larger than interior rooms. As an example, on Allure of the Seas, a standard interior room is somewhere between 150 and 172 square feet. Whereas a superior ocean view stateroom with balcony on Allure comes in at 182 square feet, plus 53 square feet of balcony space. Room size is really hard to quantify here in a YouTube video, but every extra square foot that you have of living space really does make a difference and it becomes noticeable quickly. It all adds up to more room for everybody to maneuver in and out and make the experience feel less crowded. Beyond the size difference, balcony stadiums have natural light, which means the room feels less dark and gloomy. You also get fantastic views of the ocean and the ports that you're visiting. Even the most ardent interior cabin fan out there is gonna be hard pressed to debate the virtues of an interior room over a balcony. Personally, I think the best part of an interior room is the fact that it gets really pitch dark, which makes for excellent sleeping additions. So is it important to book a balcony? While it's always nice to have a balcony cabin on any sailing, I think there are certain itineraries that might lend themselves to making it more of a necessity. On a shorter cruise, an inside cabin is more than satisfactory given how limited your time is on board the ship and how likely it is you'll be spending more time around the ship on the pool deck or simply enjoying what there is to do on board. On these short cruises, I think a lot of people end up just using their room for sleeping and changing clothes. In fact, if you're the type of person that spends most of their time on a cruise out and about in general, not having access to your own veranda probably doesn't matter much because you won't be in the room. Plus, there's plenty of places on public decks to take in the views, sunsets, and ocean breeze. The extra money you would have spent on a balcony to be reallocated towards a drink package or specialty restaurant. But if you're gonna take a longer cruise with more sea days and think you might spend more time in your cabin during that cruise, then you'll want the view and extra space that comes with a balcony room. 
on Alaska or Mediterranean itineraries, it's great to be able to take in the scenic views without having to run upstairs to the pool deck. In fact, cruises that take you on a more scenic journey where you can see glaciers or fjords are when spending extra for a balcony cabin is indeed important. Having your own balcony is really nice when you can sit on a chair, read a book, have your room service delivered to the veranda, or simply enjoy sail away. Now, another factor you should think about when choosing a cabin is the amount of people that you have in your room. The more people you're sailing with, having enough space makes a difference. Both kinds of rooms are large enough to fit everybody, but on a longer sailing, being in an inside room could be more problematic. On short cruises, there's more than enough space for two people in an inside room, considering how busy you'll be around the ship and on shore. On a longer cruise, a balcony could be more useful to have time away from the public decks. Sharing a standard inside cabin for families can be an issue because of how small these rooms feel. You may determine that a larger room that cost extra is worthwhile, considering you'll also get additional beds and more space. If you're cruising with kids, the extra space from a balcony room really pays off. It's great to have the outdoor balcony as a place to go while the kids are inside. For somebody that's going by themselves on a solo cruise, the decision between a balcony or inside cabin, I think more comes down to cost than anything else. You'll pay double due to the single supplement fee regardless of which room you book. So depending on your budget, the extra cost could dictate which option you can afford. So what are the advantages here? Well, let's go into them because People that prefer inside cabins usually talk about how much better the sleep is in an inside cabin. Sleeping in a pitch black room of an interior stateroom means you won't be woken up by the sun. Many of us go on vacation after all to catch up on sleep and the notion of quality of sleep really means something when you avoid getting woken up by natural light entering the room. This is also a really good reminder, by the way, that if you are in an inside room, bring an alarm clock with you because you won't know what time it is when you wake up in the morning. Something else to think about is if you're prone to motion sickness. If the seas start getting rough, having access to fresh air and being able to see the horizon can really help in feeling better. While you could go up to public deck and get the same thing, a lot of people prefer the comfort of being in their own bed, especially if you want to sleep off the feeling a little bit. In this case, spending extra on a balcony cabin may be worthwhile. So what are the best kind of inside cabins that are out there? So you've got plenty of run of the mill inside cabins out there, but I wanted to highlight a couple of cabins that really do stand out. First of all, there's the virtual balcony room, which is a fun upgrade. The virtual balcony is more like an upgraded inside room than a replacement for the balcony room. So if you're thinking, oh, I should book an inside instead of a balcony, it's the same thing or close to it. I wouldn't go quite that far. A virtual balcony room has an 80 inch LED television that provides live HD views from outside of the cruise ship right into your cabin. On Icon of the Seas, there's actually a new type of interior cabin that might interest you. The Interior Plus Room is an inside room that doesn't compromise on space. It comes with 157 square feet of space, and that includes much more storage space. Likewise, if we're talking about the best balcony rooms that are out there, because they're so popular, there's so many balcony rooms to begin with, but there are definitely also some alternatives, like the balcony rooms that don't face the ocean. Instead, they offer views of the Boardwalk and Central Park neighborhoods, and also the Surfside neighborhood on Icon of the Seas. These balcony seat rooms have the same core balcony experience that ocean facing balconies have but often at a discounted price and it's great for people watching as well another secret balcony choice among people that cruise a lot are aft balconies located on the back of the ship these rooms lack the cookie cutter design that most balcony cabins have and they tend to be elongated or oddly shaped providing extra large verandas aft balcony cabins are a great choice when you want more space inside and out and lastly, there's also the larger balcony space you'll find on a hump balcony, which is a definitely a fan jurinary term for balcony rooms located on the ship's outward bulges. Cabins located where the ship begins to jut out often have extra large balconies to accommodate the curve or angle of the ship's superstructure. To find these balconies, look at a deck plan and you'll see where these special cabins are located. So, should you do an inside cabin or a balcony? Did I help you at all? I'm not sure on that. Depending on how you vacation, the choice may not matter much. Those that prioritize being out and about to enjoy their trip can certainly save a lot of money by booking an inside cabin. In that case, you know, an inside cabin is definitely the way to go. But if you prefer to have the views that only a private balcony can provide along with the privacy and seclusion that it comes with, well, booking a balcony cabin is a better choice. In addition, if you have more than two people in a group, a balcony would certainly be a better choice for the additional space that it provides. A balcony will cost more, but if you're flexible, your travel dates and where you sail, there are definitely deals to be found on balcony cabins, so it's not quite as expensive. Let me know in the comments below, how do you choose between an inside and a balcony cabin? And on your next cruise, which one did you choose and why? Let me know down there below the video. While you're below our video, hit the like button, 
subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets away have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.